And the wait is finally over for two astronauts who were stuck on the International Space Station for nine months. Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are finally heading back to Earth on board a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. They arrived at the station last June for what was supposed to be a week-long assignment, but their Boeing spacecraft developed numerous technical issues, leaving them stranded in orbit. And to find out more about this epic mission, we're joined by DW's senior science editor, Zulfikar Abney. Welcome to the show. Now, SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore are finally headed back home. Remind us, how did what was planned really as a quick getaway turn into such a lengthy stay in space? Well, I'm afraid it's a simple uh, point of mathematics. You know, their test flight mission of this Boeing uh, Starliner was sort of in between the normal rhythm of uh, crewed flights to the International Space Station, which usually happen every six months. So, and every mission has four astronauts. Um, so at some point, they had to basically send a mission with only two astronauts so that they could then send four astronauts back, including Sunita Williams and Barry Wilmore or Sonny and Butch. Uh, that's basically what's happened. And so if you think about it that way, you know, as soon as they decided that the, the Boeing Starliner was not safe enough to carry people on it back to Earth and they decided to send it back alone, as in on its own uncrewed, then it was kind of obvious that it was going to be six months or, or longer until they could return home. And that's that's basically what's happened. So they've had to wait, but they must have been really happy about it, I reckon. Now, besides all the unsorted business back on Earth, what are the challenges of such a long mission? Well, astronauts used to talk about uh, a phenomenon known as uh, chicken legs, puffy face. So essentially, uh, you know, one of the first things you're hit by in space is microgravity. There's not enough pressure to keep all the fluid down, so it rises up from your, your legs into your head and you get a puffy face and you get very tiny sort of, or very slim down legs. That's the first thing. But well, microgravity can do all sorts of things, like it can affect bone density, um, it can uh, create uh, muscular uh, atrophy, um, uh, and we've seen all these sorts of things, like also babyish skin can, can appear on astronauts. You can be extended in, in, in size as well. And some of that's sort of interesting, and that's been studied, for instance, uh, through the twin study of two astronauts, the Kelly brothers. One went up for about a year to the International Space Station, the other stayed on Earth, and they were able to compare because they have obviously similar genetics. So we know a lot more from what it used to just be, you know, feelings of nausea, adjusting to microgravity. But then there's also the radiation, and radiation can, and the longer an astronaut stays in space, can increase the risk of cancer in astronauts. So there is that problem, and there are many other challenges. But, you know, Sonny Williams and Barry Wilmore, Butch Wilmore, would have been prepared for this because it was a test flight, and so they would have known that anything could have gone wrong. Even before they launched in June 2024, they knew that there were helium leaks, so fuel leaks on the craft. They decided to go ahead. They would have been prepared for this, and they're very experienced experienced astronauts anyway, so they would have known about those challenges. I guess that the biggest challenge is if, I don't know, you have a technician come into your house and you have to change appointments or something like that, but also, <laughs> you know, on a more serious point, mental uh, issues, you know, having to adjust to that and then not really having any security about when exactly we're going to come back, because as we recall, the re their return has been postponed quite a few times over the yeah. last nine months. And they're not home yet. What does their return like no. look like and how risky is it? They're mid-flight right now. Well, um, the flight itself will take about 17 hours, um, which is a bit longer than the flight out, um, but about 17 hours. Um, any space flight is risky. So no matter whether you're doing a, um, a, a test flight or you're doing a sort of, a, in, an, in inverted commas, a regular flight uh, mm. that is done, you know, regularly, six, every six months or even more regularly than that, space is very difficult. We tend to sort of forget that or sort of look past it as, as space travel gets more and more sort of common as it were, you know, and yeah. people in the States talking about Mars and what have you, you know, that's just, it's just a very dangerous, you know, essentially putting people on the, the top of a rocket most of yeah. the time, which is essentially a missile, which is essentially something that explodes. So we'll have to leave it there. Difficult. Always has <laughs> we'll been, have to leave always it there. will be. That was Silphagar Albany. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure.